are going to talk about the background, including temporal abstraction in reinforcement learning, the definition of options and semi-MDP. After that, we are going to talk about three option discovery algorithms. Human decision making is always at multiple levels of temporal abstraction. Considering a man deciding to drink a cup of coffee, in his high-level planning, he may grind the beans, measure the right quality of water. Each of the high-level steps will down to the smallest actions, such as arm movements. Temporal abstraction has been explored in AI at least since the 1970s. It has been shown that the temporal abstraction has a set of benefits. It can generate shorter plans and uh, decomposes a large, the large problems into small problems to reduce the complexity of choosing actions. In addition, it can improve exploration by taking shortcuts in the environment. How can an agent represent the stochastic closed loop and the temporarily extended course of action. A set of reinforced learning work has been proposed to solve this problem, such as HAMs, MaxQ, and Options, where option framework is the most famous method. The term like skills, macros, or temporarily abstract, temporary, uh, abstract actions mentioned in other papers or refer to options. We will use an example as a simple illustration to help introduce the background. The room example is a grid word environment with four actions. The label G indicates the goal location. Now we talk about the options. Options means a generalization of actions. They start from a initial, initiation state, specify a way of choosing actions until termination. For example, an option named open the door might consist of a, a initial initiation state where a closed door is within reach. A policy for reaching breath grasping and turning the door knob, and a termination condition for recognizing that the door has been opened. There are two kinds of options, Markov option and semi-Markov options. Formally, we first refer to Markov option O, which consists of three components. An initiation states set I, in which O may start it. A policy pi followed during O and a termination condition beta, which is the probability of, a, of determining in each state. For example, the red arrows indicates the policy pi of an option named go to hallway. Now we can connect the standard reinforced learning with the options. The actions in the traditional reinforced learning can be considered as a special case of options, where each action corresponds to an option, which always lists exactly one step. It means each state is an initiation state of an option, and each option terminates at every step. A more useful and general option is called semi-Markov option. The difference between Markov option and semi-Markov option is that in Markov, op in Markov option, policy and uh, termination condition depend only on the current state. In semi-Markov option, policy and uh, termination condition may depend on entire his history of states actions and the rewards since the init initiation of the option. That is- So, so wait, wait. 
I, I think what you're presenting, just reading this, uh, this is not good enough. <laughs> um, when you present a seminar, um, you shouldn't just read the slides. People can read on their own. It's more important to flush out the insight and go slowly, actually, initially, especially. So, for example, uh, you have this termination, st probability of termination. Can you elaborate on that? What, what does that mean? You mean you are terminating this option stochastically? Yes. Uh, the, uh, Can you use an example to illustrate a store example? What does that mean? Uh, yes. What's the probability? What is this gamma? Point, point, this is the discount factor, the reward? Uh, yes. Um, the determination probability pi, it means uh, when, we, when the agent uh, stay in some state st, it will stop. Uh, it will stop from the op the option based on the probability of beta. So, beta first, is so for example, in this game, this the opening door, this game doesn't have this door knob turning. This business It's not described in the states or actions or anything. Now you're describing a new game. A new task? Uh, what is for, it? For example, uh, for example, <laughs> the go to hole with the option. Uh, okay. uh, for example, we have uh, an option name name the go to hole way. Mm -hmm. And um, when we in this room, mm -hmm. when we enter the when we when the agent in this state in this state, um, he will or it will obtain. Uh, determination probability beta. In this state, the beta may be zero or maybe one. It means the agent will um, get rid from this option when, yeah, when so, it that's a, stays that's, in this state. That looks like deterministic to me, right? When you, deter, when you terminate or not, Sounds like deterministic at this example. Yes, it is de deterministic in in my example. When when the agent in this state, the de the determination probability may be zero. Yeah. So when do you have an example? Do you have an example for for which you terminate the option? I mean, probabilistically. Mm, uh, yes, maybe in this state, the determination probability will be uh, 0.5 or 0.67. Then you, 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 you fail if you terminate there. Uh, yes. Well, it doesn't mean that the agent yes, fails. It means that the agent might move to a different option. Fails means then you, you don't go to the hallway. You didn't succeed to go to the hallway, right? I think the task hasn't been defined yet. So far, only one option has been defined and not the episode termination. I think in this example, the determination, <laughs> the de determination is uh, deterministic. In not stochastic. Yeah, how do we imagine a situation in which we need to perform probabilistic termination? Mm. So you can consider a driving task where Given a certain observation, the agent might want to change to the left lane. But in a certain state, there's a probability that the agent would choose another decision to drive to the, a certain speed 
and then change to the left lane. So changing to the left lane and driving to a certain speed, those are two different options. And given the particular state, the agent could have a stochastic uh, decision on which option to take. And that decision is the decision to terminate. Okay, still a little vague to me. Okay. So you need to have a pi, the policy following, follow. So that pi is the standard, but this is also a probabilistic policy, it looks like, right? This pi. Yes, you mean the policy? So it's a state action pair mapping to zero one. What is that? It's the probability you take your certain state and they take certain action. Is that the policy? In in this uh, in this example, the the policy is also deterministic. Yeah, but, but in general. Can, <laughs> uh, yeah. General generally we can consider the policy. Is stochastic. Uh, for example, we can we can end a uh, an arrow to uh, to the right with probability zero. Five. Okay. You mean? It seems to me that for every state there, beta of every state is equal to one. Is that correct? Data. Oh yes, in the. Uh, in, your, in your example, using the one, you use the one arrow. Yeah, yes. The arrow, using the arrow is the uh, initiator state. All, all the states uh, with the red arrow is the initial or initi initiate so state. So for every state, beta of s is equal to one. Oh, yeah. In, in the, in the beta in the equal to zero. Zero means not get rid from the state. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. In, of in each state. Yes. So beta of s is the probability of terminating in state s, right? Uh, yes. And that that is saying that you always add, you always will exit from that little thing in the middle. Yes. Uh, when well, we always stay in this state, just uh, when we go to the hallway, the determination probability will be one, and we will stop the shot. So, any questions? Um, so we 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 begin to so in the previous uh, presentations it looks like the, the uh, policy it's deterministic right but yes. MDP I think you can for general MDP you can have a probabilistic policy. But in the previous yeah. presentations, everybody has been talking about deterministic policy. Yes, and because it's, the, it's only the reward is stochastic or something, or the transition is stochastic. Yeah. So actually, in practice, it's more common for the reward to be deterministic and uh, the policy to be stochastic. In, in last week's uh, seminar, uh, the presentation mostly focused on the stochastic policy and the gradient that was presented was stochastic. Yeah, but the, no, I think that the reward was... Uh... So consider the case of Atari game. Um, the reward is a fixed score, and given a certain state, the game engine tells you what the reward is, and that's a fixed number.
So reward is uh, fixed. The transition is stochastic. You're saying? I'm saying that's the usual, the, the more common practical case. Yes, I think so. You take a certain action, you move left or right. I mean, this is deterministic, isn't it? But you use certain probability to move left, certain probability to move right. Do people make decisions like that? So um, a stochastic policy can be useful when you have state aliasing and especially useful in the multi-agent setting to uh, yeah, break away so, from okay, that. You have ambiguity, yeah, sure. But in the, in the, in the action, I think it, what, it's always taking the greedy, right? Take the minimum one, minimizing the, the cost, the value function, right? That's the policy, that's the action you take. I don't see any stochasticity in the previous presentation. The stochastic thing is the reward. That's what I understood. The policy gradient presented last week was uh, for stochastic policy. There was a log pi, and I don't think it makes any sense to take the log of a deterministic policy. Lock pi. Okay. I forgot about last week's presentation. <laughs> okay. Uh, in my opinion, um, the value based. Uh, value -based uh, there's echo. A lot of echo. Yeah, go ahead. It's deterministic. Um, but in the policy gradient based method, the policy uh, is always stochastic. The policy is stochastic. The reason why the policy is stochastic is we always cannot observe the full state. If we can observe the full state, we can take a deterministic policy, but we always observe part of the state. So we always make stochastic policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. But, that, yes, but I think the reward function is always deterministic. Uh, in my opinion. So, um, let's continue. Mm. Now uh, we continue to talk about the semi mark of um, options. In general, a uh, semi mark of option is initiate, initiated and sometimes say T, uh, and it uh, determines the actions selected for some number of steps, say K, and then determines in S tau, where tau equals T and K. Let H be the set of possible histories from T to tau. Mm, a semi Markov option is also represented <laughs> as a triple, where the policy and the determination condition are function of possible his histories instead of the states. After 
defining the options, uh, we may consider the policy over options. Thus, we require a high level policy, mu over options. To distinguish from mu, we can call a conventional policy pi over actions as flat policy or low level policy. To evaluate the policy mu, we should obtain the value function of the options. Define Q mu as the value function. It is similar to the traditional reinforced learning value function, except the value function is conditioned on the option O, initiated in S and time T, and mu followed after termination. The option, the optimum Q equals the max Q value within all the options. Now we compare the difference between MDP and the semi MDP to illustrate why options can realize temporal abstraction. As we know, the state trajectory of an MDP is made up of discrete time trajectories uh, and homogeneous discount. MDP do not involve temporal abstraction while S semi MDP, which comprises larger continuous time transitions and the discrete events real nice, can realize temporal abstraction. But SMDP is a black box because the low level policies between the two events cannot be nerd. With these definitions, MDP together with the set of options O formally comprises an SMDP. In this case, the underlying base system is an MDP with regular single stamp transitions while the options define potentially larger transitions like this of SMDP that may last for a number of discrete steps. Thus, options enable an MDP trajectory to be analyzed in MDP or SMDP. And that is why options can realize temporal abstraction. Yes. Also, really, uh, in, uh, it means, uh, for example, and uh, we we it means the the we oh we often make a decision and to discrete time step. You mean uh, in some time intervals, the higher risk and the higher risk. Can you repeat your? You mean when I. Yeah. The SMDP I mean, why introduce the option? I'm sorry, can you work on this internal? Oh. I can't hear anything. Uh, you guys are speaking too far away from the speaker. Yeah, so could you turn to So the question is what is interval dependent scout? Oh um, as for SMDP, SMDP comprise continuous traditions. And uh, during the continuous transitions, there are several discrete events. You know, the node indicates uh, events, and the internal, uh, the interval dependent discount. It means the depend the dependence between the 
it wants that you what? Um, I mean, as I understand, the time between this recurrence is different, and you need to adjust your discount factor according to the, the time difference between the events. Am I right? I think this has to do with the stochastic termination, right? So some of these uh, things in SM options terminates that the length is, is sort of stochastic between events, discrete events in SM, in options. So therefore, because of a different length, then discounting factor should be adjusted accordingly. So you can think of the situation where you have NDP, which has a global clock. Reckon, I mean, how long, I mean, how many uh, time steps you have uh, evolved. And SMDP, the option, sometimes takes a few time uh, steps, sometimes take more steps to terminate the event in options. It's a stochastic. And then before you go to the next one, then the reward uh, is realized after an option is terminated and they move on to the other one and then discounting factor will have to be adjusted accordingly. Is that what you mean? Oh, yes. Uh, because in SMDP, the, the timestamp is not uh, constant. It may depend on the, the distance between the two events. So the, the discount is, in, is depend on the, the two events, the time between the two events. The time internal, inter, interval between the two events. Um, formally in SMDP, the amount of time between one decision and the next decision is a random variable top. Oh, this is the reason why the discount is interval dependent. And the transition probability is the event terminates in, a, in S prime after 12 steps. And this is the Bellman equation of SMDP. We can solve the Bellman equation while the traditional reinforced learning algorithms or the dynamic programming. Um, now we define the reward and the translation probability of the option options followed by the SMDP. Let epsilon O S T denotes the event of O being initiated in state S and time T. The reward of option O is the expectation of reward from T to T and tau where t and tau is a random time and which O determinates. With these definitions, an MDP together with a set of options O formally comprises an SMDP. So we can write a generalized form of the Bellman equation as, as, as SMDP. And now we introduce the Bellman optimality equation of the option model followed by the SMDP. Bellman optimality equation can be solved exactly or uh, appro approximately using method that's general, generalized to the usual dynamic programming or the reinforced learning algorithms. Uh, such as Q learning. Uh, this is a simple iteration of planning with options. 
the sales of the grid correspond to the states of the environment. The agent can perform one of four actions. In each of the four rooms, we provide two hallway options designed to take the agent from anywhere within the room to one of the two hallway cells. And this is the low level policy or the flat policy underlying one of the eight hallway options. You can see this is the, the policy of option O2. The upper part of the figure shows the venue function after first two iterations of venue iteration using just the primitive <coughs> actions. The error of the di disk in each cell is proportional to the estimated venue of the state. After two iterations, most uh, states still hand their initial venue of zero. In the low part is with the hallway options. After two iterations, all the states become accurately unvenued, which shows that the learning, learning room by room is much faster than cell by cell. And the hallway options is learning room by room, but the primitive options is learning um, cell by cell it is much faster. Just the questions um, on the previous slide. For the hallway options, is the flat mm -hmm. policy learned during the training or is it uh, initialized by expert knowledge and fixed? Uh, it is fixed. It just uh, uh, take an action which is, uh, which is, um, which can, which, uh, yes, it is, it, it is initialized. Okay, so it's not learned. Yes, it's not learned. Okay, thanks. When we combine the MDP with a set of options, the decision process becomes an SMDP. As we mentioned before, we can solve the SMDP by standard reinforced learning algorithms like Q-learning. The SMDP Q-learning consists of two steps. And state S, initiate option O and execute until termination. After that, we will observe the determination state S prime uh, and the number of them stop and the discounted return are. The main concern of SMDP Q learning is that we can only estimate the Q value of the option after the determination of the option. Mm, we know SMDP measures can apply to options but only when they are treated as indivisible units. That means once an option has been selected, such methods require that its policy be followed until the option determinate. Um, but more interesting and uh, potentially more powerful methods are possible by looking inside options and uh, interrupting options before they would terminate. To look inside the options, intro option methods estimate the Q value and each translation. That means it can interrupt the options and each translation while the option has low values. We update the value function of option or every translation as this equation, where UK is an estimate of the value of state option pair SO upon arrival in state S, where beta S means the probability of determining the option O. 
Uh, this is the reference of the first part. Now we towards the second part. Options, options learning. Options are typically learned using sub goals, uh, but in the formal examples, we don't learn uh, the options uh, because the policy of the option uh, is uh, has been initialized. And options are typically not using the sub goals. There are three kinds of option learning algorithms. The simplest method are tabular case, which utilizes those states and sub goals. And in our formal examples, they they are belong to the first method. And a set of methods in more complex environment predefine the sub goals while domain knowledge. And the last, uh, which constructs good options without requiring requiring a priori domain knowledge, is namely options discovery. Today we focus on options discovery. So, so the, the, the first part, uh, the option is uh, no, the policy. Yes, in the previous uh, examples. Uh, so, 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 in, in the, in the for example, uh, uh, so, so, how, how do you define, uh, predefine the, the option? Policy, the policy of. Mm -hmm. in, so, how, how do you define the. So, you say the option is predefined. And um, we just, uh, you know, in the previous example, the options is just uh, like this. This is the two options, O1 and O2. And um, when we define the options in, in this, oh, I'm sorry, we do O1 and O2. Uh, there are two options. And um, do you mean how we define the two options? No, no. So in, the question is, so these two options are given like before you are starting to solve the problem. Yes. So, 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 how, um, so how is related to the, 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 the regional Oh, you know, based on the option, when we so you mean so uh, for all these states, there is an other action that is equal to the. Yeah, that that high level action is option, but um, um, how this is initialized before you actually. Um, you mean how we utilize options to help us solve the problem? That's the general question. More specifically, how do you how do you initialize this? Um, in this example, we initialize the two options because we want to solve the problem which we want the agent to arrive at the whole way, you know. Um, so we design two options. The two options is very simple. Is simply, it's very simple because uh, it uh, means the two options means when the agent and, and a given state, the agent just considering 
take O1 or O2, the agent just considering take the two kinds of um, action. So uh, the, the action becomes more simply. And, So we focus on, um, in this talk, we focus on options discovery algorithms. And there are substantial prior work exists on option discovery. Um, Policy-based, uh, policy gradient-based methods learn options jointly with the uh, policy over options in an end-to-end -end fashion by extending the policy gradient. Um, information theoretic based methods use information theory to discover diverse options. As for agent options and the rational uh, options, we don't introduce them in this talk. Today we focus on three of these methods. First, we talk about the option critic. And the insight of the option critic is that Options can be learned end-to-end -end jointly with a policy over options using policy gradient, uh, which is different from our previous example, which we need to predefine the uh, options. Now we just uh, learn the options with the entire policy. It means we just uh, solve Solving solve our problems by uh, what with learning the options. Option critic is proposed based on actor critic. An actor critic is an on policy method where the actor learns a policy decoupled from the value function, and the critic provides provide feedback to improve the actor. As for option critic, the option policies and the, the, the option policies and the policy over options pi capital omega belongs to the actor. And the option execution, uh, execution model is depicted by a switch over the context a new option is selected according to pi capital omega only when the current option terminates. The option value Sorry, is Sorry, uh, just a question. Um, oh. Is the number of options, uh, how is that determined? Oh, it needed to be predefined. It is just uh, given by uh, given before training the algorithm, training okay. the model. So it's a hyperparameter. Okay, thanks. Okay, the option value is estimated by the intra option value learning model. Uh, or it's estimated by the intra option value learning method which we has introduced before. And the Q capital omega is the option value function and the QU is the value of executing an action in the context of a state option pair. And the omega is the option. Pi capital omega is the policy over options. And pi omega theta is the intra option policy. Uh, it is the option, uh, it is a po policy of the option. And beta omega theta is a termination probability. And the U is the option value function upon arrival.
So basically, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it just adjusts the, the regional cost rating definition. So, 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 so. So, since, so, since the location has changed, yeah, this is this definition is uh, what's the relationship between this definition and the semi Oh, uh, it, the difference is just the auction where before we <coughs> we uh, we use O as the option. Now we use Omega as the option uh, because this paper uses Omega as the option. And this is the mu, you know, the mu, the high level policy. And this is the pi. We mentioned we we mentioned it in the previous slide, and the beta is not <coughs> to change. Change it. V omega. You, you mean which? Oh yes, it's the value function of the of the uh, pi capital omega. Which one is uh, capital omega is high level policy, and uh, this this omega is low level policy. It it the low level policy it means the options of the 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 policy of the options, and this policy is is to uh, take take the action based on the option. It choose it. Given a state, the high-level policy just uh, choose one of the options, and this is given a state. It uh, take a primitive action. It will take. This is low level. This is high level. So, so basically, the low-level policy is to have an equal of states and also options. <laughs> And in the outputs of the probability of the action. Yes. Yes. This output is the auction. So the value, value is value is uh, B omega is based on what? Uh the V omega is calculated based uh as we mentioned before. <laughs> Mention the SMDP. So the V is calculated based on this equation, which is similar to the traditional reinforcement learning, except uh, the except that. The time, the time interval is not is is not one. It uh, depend on the random variable tau. We define the mm. combination before the You mean uh, when we use the combination probability? Could you you go back to the option rating slide to that to the in the last slide that you Option credit. Option. Option value. Option.
You mean why we multiply, yeah. multiply the determination beta? Because we, we want to estimate the consequence of the, uh, the, the consequence reward of the based on the um, option. But and to the next uh, time step, we, we will, oh, first, uh, this method is only based on Markov option. In the Markov option, um, determine the option based on each state. So at each state, we will have a, a terminal probability. So when we estimate, when we, uh, we can see the, this equation, when we estimate the Q value, of the current option. In the, in the current state, we get the reward, but in the, in the next time step, we may, uh, we may have probability uh, beta to take another, to take another option. Yes. You mean we, we or not? Here, uh, since you have like the condition probability that we can understand as prime as a combination state, so this is just a B as prime is just a single cost for the reward for the it it is cumulative reward. No, I understand the better distribution for, for an option, not for the whole problem. So in this case, so since you terminate uh, like one option, you, you have to set another option, something like that. Since you I don't know, somehow you decide what is the option, you just use the low. I mean it's fine. It's fine. Yes, according to the equation, if you, if you terminate the current option, you can take a later beta times value and the not terminate the equation. You excluded this option and get the Q otherwise. So the same. Yeah, or the same option that you use from the That's the equation. Other um, so the main results of this paper is the gradient updates of the options. Um, first, we update the policy of the option omega by policy gradient. And the gradient of the policy, policy parameters theta is given by this equation and this has the usual interpretation because it just take better, it just may take the better pre primitives more often inside the option. And, the, and then we update the termination while <coughs> policy gradient two. The gradient of the termination parameters V is given by this equation and uh, where A is the advantage function. Uh, this means we want to learn, learn the options that have a larger, uh, that have a large uh, advantage. 
um, in this uh, in this slides we only consider how to how to optimize the policy of the op option, but we didn't uh, refer to the we don't refer to the high level policy. Uh, and we we don't refer to how to train the high level uh, policy because the high level the, the training process of the high level policy is similar to the traditional reinforcement learning but the um, but uh, as for the options it is more difficult to to optimize the options or to to optimize especially to um, train the policy of the op option. Now we now we talk about the second algorithm, uh, which is feudal networks for hierarchical reinforcement learning. And the insight of this paper is. The high-level policy and the options play complementary roles. Uh, in option critic, the policy over options changing uh, will change options at every step. Maybe uh, it will not change, but it will estimate the options at every time step. <coughs> uh, thus, the high-level varies from its own mission because we frequently change our options in the creative. Uh, but in this, in this paper, the high-level policy tries to figure out the goal of the option, and the option will take actions, try to achieve the goal set by the high-level policy. Mm, this approach is inspired by future reinforced learning, Proposal of uh, Hinton. In the feudal network, um, just to net the high level manager, uh, this is the high level policy we mentioned before, and the set task to the sub manager. The sub manager means the uh, options. And the sub manager will learn to maximize their reinforcement in the context of the command of, uh, given by the high level manager. Uh, this is the detail of the form model, but it is too complex. We just uh, uh, we just use a simple example to explain the form model. So, what is form? It's uh, two architectures: the manager model and the worker model. Uh, imagine that the agent in some state st, the manager model m emit a goal in a latent state, GT, where it wanted the agent to move, uh, or the, it wanted the worker to move to this goal. The worker will take actions to try to achieve this goal. Uh, it may not uh, be so perfect, but it roughly moves to this direction. And the very important thinking is that the manager try to figure where the latent space to go and the worker try to achieve that state. They play complementary roles and they can work in different time scale. The manager can be longer term than the worker. It means uh, uh, the manager may take an action and uh, uh, for example, at a five time step, but the worker need to take action at each time step. Um, now we talk about the learning process of form. Um, it is a bad idea to train an end to end like, uh, an end to end model like option critic. The main concern is that the goal generated by the manager would have no semantic meaning because they, they would 
be just the values generated by optimization algorithm. It means the manager does not try to guide the worker in option uh, critic. In contrast, uh, in contrast, independently training the manager to guide the worker is a good idea uh, because it will predict advantage directions in the state space. Uh, it means it will set transitions or strategies to the worker. And the, the manager will reward the worker uh, to follow their directions. Uh, the objective function of the form is uh, the same as the standard reinforcement learning. Um, and the goal of the agent is, is to maximize the discounted return. And we focus on two questions. How to train the manager to need and how to train the worker to follow. Uh, first, we talk about the manager, which is the main contribution of the paper. The manager uh, is means the high level policy. The manager is producing the goal GT with some state ST, where mu is the high level policy and O is the sub policy. We can think of the transition distribution it, defi it defines. The transition distribution P describes the distribution of state that we end up and the end of the sub policy, given the start state ST and the goal mu, uh, which means the distribution over the end states given start states. It is uh, uh, valid to refer to this as a policy because the original MDP is isomorphic to a new MDP with policy pi TP and the transition function P. Um, and the transition policy uh, means we just use the uh, transition probability as the uh, policy. So what is C? 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 Of C? Yeah. Uh, C is the horizon. Uh, as we mentioned before, the manager uh, take an action uh, every C time steps. And it's fixed? Uh, yes, it fixed the, before training the model. Uh, in this paper, it is set as a um, turn. So the state uh, is also uh, translated in C time steps from ST to ST and the C. So basically, during C time steps, uh, it's a uh, very small policy. Is Uh, for the high level, the high level policy will take only one action, but the the policy of the options will take C actions. High level policy basically chooses what policy, like what sub policy to take, right? Yes, yes, and the sub policy will take the. Yes. Uh, why we why it they call it uh, transition policy because it just uh, directly uses the transition probability as the policy. Uh, so we can write down the transition policy gradient of the transition policy pi TP. Level policy. So, so the output of the policy is that in the space of 
the high level just output a, a goal embedding, the GT. Is that the, in the same space or a different space? You would say in the previous example, like in the for example, then uh, I the old um, not be in the space of the region, so this has not the same space. What is the on the space mean? Uh, I mean, I mean, is is this uh, have a sub policy or output output the same energy space? As the low level policy? Yes. No. Yes, the high level policy output uh go embedding, but the low level policy output a uh, uh, framing to action, a, a real action, GT. I know. I'm so sorry. This is different from the action. Yes, it's different from the action. The action may be up, down, or right, but this, but the, the high level action is just a goal embedding. Uh, it's a, just a vector. No, I mean, you can see like this. Right. Yes. Um, but this is, there is a question. Is that, that the, uh, the transition distribution is unknown because it depends on the worker because it, uh, the transition probability is also dependent on the work. It also depends on the low level um, policy. And there is a trick. And they make an assumption on that distribution and uh, intrinsically motivate the worker or reward the worker to follow the manager and make the distribution assumption hold. Uh, they just uh, uh, utilize the the transition uh, utilize the transition probability as a intrinsic reward of the worker. In uh, you know, in the previous slides, we need we needn't train the policy of the options, but now we need to train the um, policy of the options. When we, when we need to choose the policy, we, in reinforced learning, we always need a reward. The reward may come from the external, external environment. Oh, the external reward means the reward given by the environment, but the intrinsic reward means the reward given by the manager. That is why in this paper, uh, they men it mentioned mentions that the manager can guide the worker to take action. The how, how to guide, uh, the, it's just uh, the manager give a uh, intrinsic reward to the um, worker. What is the intuition behind subtracting the state? Mm -hmm. Oh, pardon. What is the intuition behind subtracting uh, st plus c minus st? St plus. Uh, in, in the red box. Oh, uh, it, it this is uh, because and uh, state st. The manager will give a goal GT, and uh, this means uh, ST and C means 
when we when the manager give the goal if the sub policy can can uh, if the agent can get the 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 same location as but uh, the the agent is uh, arrived at the s t and c we just uh, want to compare the 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 two location the distance of the two location uh, that means we can see this exam see this, this figure uh, this is s t minus one and uh, s t minus uh, uh, s t and one minus s t we just uh, want to compare the the two location the the distance the distance between the two locations because so we is want it, uh, is it better for the states to be different or to be close together uh, yes uh, it uh, uh it um, we want the agent to arrive at a location as close as the gt because we just want the agent to arrive at the GT. Okay, but okay. The, so GT doesn't have to be like a physical location. It can be some abstract uh, state in the state space. Yes. Okay. So this is the detail of the transition gradient of the goals gradient or uh, the low, uh, yes, this is the gradient of the goal or the gradient of the manager. Where C is the horizon. And in this paper, it is set as 10 time steps. And this is advantage function. Uh, Okay, this is a cosine similarity, which, uh, which we talk about. Yes, it's just a track. Huh? Oh. And the worker is trained, trained by the intrinsic reward and the external reward. It, the external reward is just the, re reward, the, the reward uh, given by the environment, but the intrinsic reward is given by the manager. And the worker's policy pie is trained to maximize the, both the external reward and the intrinsic, uh, both the external return and the intrinsic, intrinsic return. That means the worker try to follow the instruction of the manager. And the worker is also updated by the policy gradient where this AT is the advantage function. Now we talk about the fine, the last algorithm. Hmm? Uh, uh, the phone network or the field network also the same. Also, yes, in uh, you know the the author when they make the presentation in ICML, they call their model phone, but the the paper. Oh. oh, yes, this is also called a feudal network. In feudal network, they use the Q learning. Uh, 
2017. Yes, uh, this paper is, I, I think you mean this paper? Yes. Yes. So what's the difference between Oh, they are the same. Okay, so yes. So why is different? Different paper, you know, uh, they are in the same paper. You know well, this? This one? He is asking about the and see the what's the difference. Oh, uh, the difference is that the future networks use Q learning to train their model. So the MIPP paper uses the policy gradient? Yes, use the policy gradient. And uh, they design the intrinsic reward. Who did that? Uh, the paper in 2017. Yeah. So, so basically, you, you the mention method is the mention algorithm is to start to go to the next equation. Oh, so the this yeah. yes. This is my cross gradient. So a new paper this is what? Just to start with something, what was what is the future future over the future gradient? Use that. Uh, now we go to uh, the the last uh, algorithm diversity. Yes. Okay, the last the algorithm diversity is all you need. Uh, the insight of this paper is it uh, not the skills. Here the skills uh, means the options, the the policy of the options. No skills without without reward. And it considers an uh, unsupervised reinforcement learning program to know the diverse skills or options. So why they consider the diversity? Uh, because it can learn a set of skills by maximizing the utility of this set and maximize the coverage over the set of possible behaviors. And uh, it can also help address the challenge in exploration. And why they not consider the reward function? Uh, because the in most of the environments, the reward function is sparse. Uh, that means we we can only get the reward and the final and the end of the trajectories. Um, for example, if we consider the treatment process, the, the treatment process as a MDP, we can only get the reward. Uh, for example, if the patient uh, uh, if the if the patient alive or die, and the end of the trajectory, we can't get any reward during the treatment of the patient. And uh, for a second reason, uh, the reward fun we when we design the reward function, we require much domain knowledge. 
the architecture of, of this paper is very clear. Um, the fir uh, first we sample a uh, skill Z. A skill is the option. Uh, you mean the, the uh, in this paper Z is just uh, um, a one hot vector. So this is, this is the option. Oh, uh, yes. So there is a latent variable. And a policy condition on a fixed Z is a skill. Or we, we, can, we can also call Z is a skill. Because we uh, uh, give different z, the the policy will take different action. So, so first we we sample. We we can, uh, I think we can call z is a skill. But more press, more previously, we the, the skill is a policy conditioned on a fixed V. Uh, first, we sample a uh, skill Z from the skill distribution PZ, where Z is a latent variable. And the skill also means the op option. Mm, indeed, a policy condition on a uh, fixed Z refers to a skill. And we take action while a bit, uh, we take the action based on the skill and the state. And the goal is to update the. Uh, oh, I, I need to mention that the discriminator is used to predict the skill. There is a discriminator and we will introduce it in the following slides. And the goal, the goal of this, this model is to update the discriminator to predict a better skill and update the skill to visit diverse state that makes it more discriminable. P. P. Z. Uh, Q five is the discriminator. We need to uh, we need to know it, and uh, because in the in the training, in the training step, we can sample of the from PZ, but in the testing, we we can only generate a skill based on Q. So we, uh, I mean, train the model and the test the model. This is a training process. PZ, uh, in this paper, PZ is just a, a uniform distribution. Uh, for example, we just uh, predefine four skills. So PZ is, uh, is just a, a uniform distribution. So conceptually, it seems a little bit strange that this can work when Q5 only takes in ST plus one as the conditional. Because you would imagine that you would need a whole trajectory to mm. determine what is a skill versus another skill. So I'm 
a bit surprised that this makes sense. Uh, yes, um, in, in this paper, the the sample of scale just at the beginning of the trajectory. During the trajectory, they use the same scale. During one trajectory, they, they will use the same scale. But I, I think... Uh, so, uh, this question is about the uh, new part of the thing. Uh, the 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 scale is based on the approach direct to the set of states. Yes. But uh, you can you can compress the information of the previous history into the previous state. I think maybe you can go. Yes, uh, I think so this is this needed to condition on the the whole, the whole trajectory. Okay, yeah, it could be just an empirical method because uh, I think, yeah, if, if the state is different enough for different uh, scales, then it should still work. It's just maybe harder for it to work. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Oh, okay, uh, so, the, the, the goal of the, this paper is to learn skills that are not only distinguishable, but also diver as diverse as possible. So how does this model work? They, because they, they, they just try to learn diverse, skill, diverse skills. So how to promise the diverse? They, prom they propose three ideas. The first idea is uh, um, different is they think different skills should visit different states and hence be dis distinguishable and the second they use states not actions to distinguish a skill because sometimes when we take an action uh, the environment may not change finally uh, they encourage exploration by learning skills that act as randomly as possible. And to encode the three ideas, they construct the objective function using the, using the location from information theory, which consists of three components. The first uh, component is maximizing the mutual information of the skill and the state, which indicates the skill should control which state the agent visits. And the second component is minimizing the entropy of, the entropy of A and Z, uh, which indicates that it is the state, not the action used to distinguish the skill. Mm, if we Considering all the skills together with PZ and the mixture of policies, the last, uh, the, the last uh, component which maximizing the entropy of the action is to try to maximize the, ent the entropy of the mixture policy, which encodes the last uh, idea. Mm, now we rearranged the objective function, which also has three components. And to encourage PZ to have high entropy, the PZ is fixed as a uniform distribution. And to minimize the mutual information of the condition on S, uh, the end they end this term into the reward function. Um, but we can't uh, com compute the P, P they given as exactly. So they approximate the posterior with a learned discriminator, Q phi, the given S. 
it just use this to replace the PZS. And uh, for the last uh, component, this quite really try to maximize the entropy of the action mm, to implement. In to implement this, they use a soft actor critic because uh, in soft actor critic, uh, it maximizes the policy's entropy over the actions. Yes. It just uh, uh, because we we have to train two kinds of policy, um, not two kind kinds of policy. Because we we need to train the the policy of the options, and the policy of the options is uh, similar to the traditional reinforcement learning. So we can directly use the soft actor critic to uh, to train our low level policy or to train the skill because the policy of the skill is similar to the traditional policy, uh, the, the traditional reinforcement learning. Uh, because this action is uh, the same as the tra the action of the traditional uh, the action of the traditional reinforcement learning. Oh yes, uh, you, you can just uh, um, consider it just a uh, extended states. It just uh, combined with so, another so vector. Okay, so, so this is that's why they assume that. Skill is only the state. Yes. Okay. In summary, we introduced the definition of the options, uh, which is the generalization of the actions. And uh, uh, due to the MDP, do not involve temporal abstraction, while SMDP can realize it. Uh, so with any set of options defined on MDP, the decision process becomes an SMDP. Uh, a set of algorithms try to discover good options. Uh, in option critique, they learn an end-to-end joint, an end-to-end framework using policy gradients. And in feudal, the high-level policy and the options play complementary roles. And for the last algorithm, uh, it uh, uses an unsupervised learning exploration as the pre materials of the, uh, for example, the hierarchical reinforcement learning or the imitation reinforcement. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for staying